Hello, and welcome to Dolphin's Dive, the handelabra stream that is here for once. For once. Um, well, we'll talk about that. Handelabra believes in civil rights for everyone and in being as inclusive as possible, so any comments or activity actively working against those goals are not welcome and will not be tolerated. You can follow us at Handelabra Games on Twitch or Handelabra on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. You can follow me personally at Logic Dolphin on Twitch, Discord, YouTube, or pretty much any avenue. Send us the multiverse, send us Earth Prime, Bot of the Ninth, One Deck Dungeon, One Deck Galaxy, Aeon's End, and Spear Island are all available on Steam, iOS, and Android devices, with the exceptions of One Deck, One Deck Dungeon, which is also on Switch, and One Deck Galaxy, which is in early access on Steam. You can find more information on those games at Handelabra.com. Wow, it's been ages since I've given that greeting out. Um... Yeah, I mean, I think I, I did a stream for the um, Jacket Earth release, but I've largely been absent for the past, like, month and a half or so because my work schedule has been random and I haven't quite sorted out, or hadn't quite sorted out how I wanted to handle these streams. But moving forward, we do have a plan. I will stream one day of the week. That day will be determined that week uh, because my schedule is uh, inconsistent. But that is okay. I am happy with the work. But for instance, this week I am working Thursday and Friday, so I would not have been able to do a Thursday stream as normal. Um, I work a lot of Fridays, so it's pretty unlikely I'll do a Friday stream. But this week is Wednesday. Um, I believe next Wednesday I'm working. Um, I don't actually. No, no, I'm actually off next Wednesday. I'm off Wednesday and Thursday. Well, we'll probably just stick to Wednesday in any case, uh, unless otherwise stated. Well, I will otherwise state because I will I will announce every week when to expect this stream. If you're watching on YouTube, it doesn't actually matter. I mean, of course, you'll be watching this stream on YouTube or catching the VOD when it happens. But for the live stream, well, that's just up in the air. But yeah, I am here. I will return to my weekly duties I apologize to all of my fan. <laughs> just kidding. I know there's two of you. Ha! <laughs> Double dip. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we're here to play Sentinels because, well, it's the top of the month, even though I did miss the March monthly Oblivion match. But we are going to do Oblivion this month. Rules for my Oblivion match. Four heroes hit random until I get four. I got four. Excellent. We have Redeemer Fanatic. We have Heroic Luminary. We have, I believe this is variant Lantern Jack, isn't it not? Is it? I don't know. It's a it's a Lantern Jack. And we have Extreme Prime Warden's Tempest. And we're fighting in Temple of Zhulong, Magmaria, Final Wasteland, Insula Primalis, and Enclave of the Endlings. Some of my favorite environments in this lineup. Uh, probably missing Time Cataclysm, which I is one of my favorites. Or is, is my favorite, I don't know. Realm of Discord's also a pretty good one. I like... But it's all good. Let's hope that we have a good, clean match. My will shall be made manifest. The final day is upon you. I will overcome this test of faith. Okay. Um, let's just start it and take one of these heroes gets uncapped. See what happens. We have Nixius. We need cards and environment trash. Although this is a good opportunity at getting one battle zone basically negated. Because unless Oblivion moves or he adds a Scion, Nixius is going to move to battle zone 2 on the first Scion turns. We'll only have one Scion phase every round. Cross our fingers, hope that that doesn't uh, become false. We have the Apprentice Poisoner. We have an Unbracing Smite. Which is just damage, because we have nothing in play. And the Aeon Men. Okay, so Oblivion did not add a Scion, that's the good news. So let's see, the shield. At the start of Oblivion's turn, if there are three cards in the environment trash, flip this card. Otherwise, play an environment card and add one devastation token to the inevitable destruction card. So we'd like to get cards in the environment trash. 
Once that does happen, uh, on the flip side of the shield, the end of Oblivion's turn, each target deals itself one fire and one toxic damage. If no hero targets take damage this way, add four devastation tokens to the inevitable destruction card. If at least four hero targets take damage this way, remove this card from the game. So damage has to happen. Otherwise, you get tokens. A lot of damage has to happen to remove the card from the game. Standard procedure, damage, damage. Nixius, and this is why I'm not worried about Battle Zone 1 just yet. At the start of this villain turn, if this card is in the same battle zone as Oblivion, flip it and move it to the other battle zone. When this card is destroyed, remove four devastation tokens from the inevitable destruction card, then remove this card from the game. Whenever this card deals damage to a hero, this card regains HP equal to the amount of damage dealt. At the end of this villain turn, this card deals the two hero targets with the lowest HP, two melee damage, and two infernal damage each. But this doesn't happen if he's in the same battle zone as Oblivion, which is the case. Even, like, there's no other Oblivion or a sign play to get in the way here. So, um, he's going to move to the battle, other battle zone and flip. On this side, the first time damage is dealt to this card each turn, add one Devastation token to the Inevitable Destruction card. When this card is destroyed, flip an objective in each hero play area, then remove this card from the game. If damage dealt by this card destroys a target, flip this card. At the end of this villain's turn, this card deals each hero target in the play area with the most rewards, three melee damage and three infernal damage. So Nixius is kind of a cool one to take out on the front side as you remove a lot of Devastation tokens. In addition to the one you get for destroying a Scion, you get four removed from Nixius. But in addition, on the other side, if you destroy him on this side, you flip objectives in each battle zone for free. So you can just like focus on Nixius and not your objectives in order to get the objectives. But he's not on this side just yet, but he will be guaranteed unless we accidentally play an Oblivion card. Other battle zone has Progeny. At the start of this villain turn, if there are four more tokens on this card, flip this card. When this card is destroyed, put the top card of each hero deck into play, then remove this card from the game. The first time this card is dealt damage each turn, add one token to this card. At the end of this villain turn, add one token to this card, then this card deals each hero target in the play area with the most rewards X energy damage, where X equals the number of tokens on this card. So, he's token based. Um, deals damage based on tokens that he has. Flips when there's four, he gets tokens when you damage him, but when he flips, at the start of this villain turn, if there are no tokens on this card, flip this card. X on this card equals the number of tokens on this card. Reduce damage dealt to this card by X. When this card is destroyed, each player draws X cards, then remove this card from the game. At the end of this villain turn, this card deals the hero target with the lowest HP X cold damage, then deals the hero target with the second highest HP X lightning damage, then deals the hero target with the highest HP X fire damage, then remove one token from this card. Also X focused, but he doesn't add tokens, he only removes them. But also has a bunch of damage reduction, starting at four, unless you damage him too many times. Also the Aeon Vassals, which deal damage, Aeon Thrall, which deals damage, adds devastation tokens when destroyed, heals when destroyed by Oblivion. Not the worst Aeon men, so we're not super worried about those. I'm wondering whether we try to leave the heroes 2-2 in this setup. Because if we leave zero heroes in battle zone one we get a devastation token even though nixius is going to move battle zones anyway this check happens first um i don't know if they want to move all the heroes to battle zone two as they'll just be beat up by all the aeon men but once nixius flees the battle zone two maybe Obliv oblivion moves to battle zone two and then all the heroes could just go to battle zone one to do objectives i guess i don't know maybe that's not the wise plan maybe we do want to go to battle zone two as that's where all the action is um is there anything we can do to aid the environment? I guess we look at our cards. Fanatic has Divine Focus, Final Dive, Smite the Transgressor, and Undaunted. Luminary has Backlash Generator, Bared Blade, Consider the Price of Defeat, and Triple Cross. Lantern Jack has Banish Pretense, Blinding Light, Ethereal Opponent, Incorporeal Form. And Extreme Primordial Tempest has Electrical Storm, Genebound Shackles, and two Grievous Hailstorms. Lots of AoE here. Tempest probably wants to be in Battle Zone 2. Our current objective is the Digital Age. At the end of your turn, reveal the top card of your deck. You may discard a card to put the revealed card into play. Otherwise, discard the revealed card. Either way, if you discarded an equipment card, flip this card. And this gives us Omni Unity, where each equipment card from your deck gains a keyword mechanical golem and has a maximum HP of 5. But at the end of your turn, each target in this play area may deal one target, one lightning damage. It's a lot of reading, huh? Standard fare for me, though, as I read things out loud. Um. We don't have the means of getting Omni Unity on Fanatic, but this does, on the front side, give us extra plays for the top of our deck, if so desired. 
Luminary does not have equipment. So she has devices. Lantern Jack. I am not familiar with this deck. Has no equipment. Tapas does have an equipment in hand, but if we just skip three turns to get the objective on Tempest, that seems bad. So Fanatic's definitely taking it. Um, I don't really see much in the way of environment manipulations. We're just going to have to do it a bit manually. Um, we do know... This one, this one Aeon Man can be final dived if so desired. Which would be something, I guess, but... Eh. There's not really much to do damage-wise. We could try to do setup, I guess, but there's not really much in the way of setup here either. But let's just take the objectives on. That's a setup kind of thing. Next one is building a king. At the end of your turn, each player may discard and or destroy any number of their equipment cards or mechanical golem cards. If at least three cards enter the trash this way in one turn, flip this card. This gives us T-Rex Bot. At the end of your turn, this card may deal one target nine melee damage. Whenever this card is dealt damage, it deals each non-hero target one lightning damage. But again, we're light on equipment, so it's gonna be hard to get, but might as well get it, I guess. Might as well take it. I'm just gonna take Undaunted. Not really much going on here. Get Holy Nova, Final Dive, and Digital Age is giving me Absolution. So if I do not put this into play, an equipment card will be discarded, which will flip this and give me Omni Unity. So I could opt to do that. This is a power, but this also gives me free damage. Each target in this play area may deal one target, one lightning damage. And it gives me a reward which is progress. Otherwise, when I return to Fnatic's turn, I'm going to have to uh, skip an objective, but I can take this. And let's take out the Anthral. Tempest with um, Grievous Hailstorm will kill it. So you can move. Do we want to leave a hero in Battlezone 1, like I said? Kind of dangerous to leave someone with Oblivion, I guess. Yeah, let's just move the battle zone too. We'll take this. Taking it is better than shuffling if there's no downside, because if you shuffle, it could go back to the top. Hello, Iron Moose. What news? No news. But no news is good news. Um... Next up is final champion. At the end of your turn, if there are more hero targets than non-hero targets in this battle zone, flip this card. Gives us cursor. Increase damage dealt by non-character card hero targets by one. Reduce the first damage that would be dealt to any hero target in this play area each turn by four. Unfortunately, our counts are bad for this. First battle zone is two hero targets, three non-hero targets. Second battle zone is three hero targets, four non-hero targets. I just moved Luminary, but that would have been a 3 and 3 in Battle Zone 1. Um, I mean, that would have been cheating to not move Luminary, I guess, because that's new information. But we can't claim this in either Battle Zone. If I move Lantern Jack to Battle Zone 2, there's 4 and 4. I'd have to take out one of these Aeon Men. Which, I mean, I guess might be possible. Depends on how much damage we have here. There's, there's some damage there, but not automatic. What damage do we have here? We have retaliatory. We have, we do have damage and a power. Um, nothing really there. Destroy up to three targets with five or fewer though. That would get rid of here. Uh, that would get the targets down. Destroy a hero non-character card though. So it has to be Undaunted or Omni Unity. I guess that's better than taking Omni Unity. Or uh, taking out Undaunted is better than taking Omni Unity. Uh, and one target deals itself two psychic. That would just be Progeny. It would clear all the Aeon then, at least. Um, and then that would give us Cursor on Lantern Jack, which is interesting, because now Lantern Jack regains or gains like, literally every Lantern Jack card says gains 2 HP, even if he's at or above his maximum. 
Uh, he doesn't regain, he just gains. He keeps gaining. ABG, always be gaining. But I don't have a means of doing enough damage otherwise, right? Because that needs a device and will only ever deal one if I do. That only deals one. Actually, no. If I, one and one will kill the Anthral. So I don't have to sacrifice Undaunted per se. But Undaunted's not like the best anyway. So let's let's do it. It does mean that Grievous Hailstorm is less good, I guess. There's a Choose For Me button there. And I will assert dominance and deal zero lightning damage. We have no cards to discard or destroy for this. Lantern Jack moves. Lantern Jack takes. So now Battle Zone 2 has four hero targets and one non hero target, so we will get that objective. Until the start of your turn, all damage dealt by hero targets is irreducible and cannot be redirected. Powerful. Um, we are equal or greater to. Yeah, this equal to. So we'll have a damage increase if I play that. But there's, an, but then I will regain or gain two HP. But you know. Um. I don't want to ping Progeny as that's going to put a token on him. I could just play this. And then you have it. And there's no reason to skip skip when your base power says draw a card. Cursor obtained. So two out of three objectives have been claimed so far. Building a king has not. Next step is the Nations and Ruins. At the end of your turn, if there are more hero targets in this battle zone than non-hero targets in the other battle zone, you may play the top card of both environment decks if you do flip this card. So if I move Tempest, there will be six hero targets in battle zone two. First battle zone will have three non-hero targets, so this will work. This gives El Mejor Legado. And it also plays environment cards. Uh, increased damage dealt by hero targets in this play area by one. At the end of your turn, this card may deal one villain target, two melee damage. That's really powerful for Tempest to get with this AoE. Um, this is also extreme from Warden's Tempest, so his base power makes non-character targets lose end of turn effects, which is cool. Uh, we're going to move you so that you can get this objective. Three out of four ain't bad. Next up is the last wager. At the end of your turn, each player may discard one card. Then any player who discarded may draw one card. If two or more one-shots were drawn this way, flip this card. If no cards are discarded this way, shuffle this card into the mission deck. If we obtain this, we get meager winnings. Meager winnings! Participation trophy! You tried! Yay! At the start of your turn, one hero target regains one HP. If no targets regain HP this way, flip one objective in this play area and remove this card from the game. That'd be really interesting to give to uh, Lantern Jack and then isolate him from the other heroes as uh, he could very well be above his max HP and not be able to have someone regain HP. That would be interesting. Uh, since we do have a plus one coming out and I don't want to deal Grievous Hailstorm damage just yet, let's just, put, let's just put Electrical Storm out and let's not do anything with our power and get Cleansing Downpour. I want to get this objective, so we shall play this off part of both environment decks. Zhulong plays Rites of Revival. Magmaria plays Fiery Crystallization. And we get Mihor Legato. I mean, I just said I didn't want to deal damage to the Progeny, so I probably should commit to that, although we could have dealt five damage to him this turn. But let's just not. So Fiery Crystallization equipments have Magma Crystal, but Magmarians will now deal each target fire damage and destroy equipment cards. Yikes. Rites of Revival does nothing other than allows us to recover an incapacitated hero character card, which in Oblivion means that they just return to the hero pool. They don't actually get back into play. Unless I think boss is out. Boss of Oblivion, you're like phase four with boss. And I think it might work, but I'm not sure. All right. An uh, Apprentice Poisoner doing the thing. 
Nixius doing his thing. We get another fiery crystallization. You can have two of those? Really? So now our equipment cards have two magma crystal keywords? Is that how that works? Equipment relic limited mechanical golem magma crystal. <laughs> hey, Licky! Just came here to say hi and try to see if you can get as many pointless points as possible. I am glad you are here. Apparently you have a streak. Three stream streak, yay! It's a lot easier to get streaks when we only stream once a week, but now I'm back, so I'm gonna stream. So we have two streams a week, yay. Which player is considered to have the most rewards in play? You're doing what, three and three? Well, Tempest, uh, yeah, all, all of these guys have something in play. All of these are hero targets. Wow, we got a lot of hero target rewards. Uh, so we do have Cursor to reduce it by four the first hit. And Lantern Jack, well, he is lowest. Um, but Fnatic also likes to take damage. Go to Fnatic. You guess crystallization would sync with filter heist and add a keyword? <laughs> if you reveal at least three different keywords this way. Well, I reveal Absolution, which has five keywords. This is my trump card. Freshly is dealing two and... Or just two. He's doing just two. So that can go to Lantern Jack. As he is at or above his max, we could take this and still be at his max. Julong plays Master of the Temple. Focus of Power is played in Battle Zone 2. Wonderful. And we get more Aeon Men. But Battle Zone 1 still has no Scion. Which is really good. When there's one battle zone without scions, that's one less play each turn, which is really good. Plus, you don't have to worry about devastation tokens in that battle zone. So you could very well just stay here. So stay here. I guess we're taking this on. We're going to discard cards, draw a lot of cards. You basically always want to discard to draw, as that will get you through your deck faster. Card draw is really strong, as the only way to get the good cards is to draw them. Fun fact. Uh, we do have damage happening, but we also have targets we could damage. We don't have to hit, like, Nixius. Or sorry, we don't have to hit Progeny, for instance. So, like, Holy Nova does AoE, but it will hit Progeny. Smite the Transgressor gives an extra power. We don't have that. Final Dive. We do have things to Final Dive. We do have an Aeon Locus we want to take out. But bear in mind that we do have two AoE here, because plus one, and then three AoE here. So the Aeon Thralls are all dead, and the Aeon Locust is at one. So it's kind of a waste of a final dive. Um, I mean, we could still do it to throw and do damage on Nixius, but damage to Nixius is also devastation tokens. Damage on Progeny is tokens also, so it's kind of annoying. This could be a skip. This is another base power that draws, so you might as well not skip skip, but like I could play Divine Focus, but then this does a start of turn thing to keep in play. I guess it's a skip. And then regain HP and draw. That would have been a nice card to have this turn. Wrathful Retribution is here. We could use that to one-shot Nixius, for instance. So we could all just damage Aeon Locus. And now we don't need to do any more damage. Each of us will discard. The other one needs three equipments discarded this way in one turn. 
so we can't discard equipments for that just yet. I think I'm going to get rid of a final dive, although it is pretty potent with the Aeon Men, so maybe not. I'm going to get rid of Holy Nova then, because we don't want AoE. Anything that discards the uh, villain card should probably be discarded. We don't have that here. Probably also Hasten Victory. It does play a top card in my deck, but it hits each villain target, which I don't want right now. Uh, what do we got here? So damage... Damage being irreducible will be good for Flipped Progeny. That's AoE, but also a lot of card draw, which I said is strong. Destroy one ongoing... Blah, blah, blah. I'll take out Searing Truth. And I'll take out a Grievous Hailstorm, as I already have one. We drew a one-shot. We drew a device. We drew an ongoing limited. We drew a one-shot. So we got two one-shots. So last wager is done. Stay where you are. Uh, we have building the king right now, but we don't have the equipments for this, but we could eventually destroy Nixius to maybe flip it for free. Create a contraption at the end of your turn. Each player may discard any number of cards. Whenever an equipment card is discarded, add one token to this card. When there are five tokens on this card, flip this card. It gives us Chekhov's Hairdryer. Power, your hero deals up to two targets, 60 reducible with energy damage each. Well, it's going to be equally hard to get that versus building a king, so I'm going to skip this for now. But I think I'm not going to shuffle it, as that will be a good reward to get. Um... Our base power deals damage based on devices, but we don't need to deal damage per se. We could get card draws. Let's get card draws. We get Smite the Transgressor, Disposable Defender, Banish Pretense, Elemental Subwave Inducer. Lantern Jack cannot regain HP past his maximum. Fun fact. And if there was Nemesis or boosts, this would be useful, but we don't have that, so I'm going to skip. There's a lot of things we don't want to hit right now, which is weird. Uh, no equipments there. No equipments there. Two equipments there. And you have no equipments ever, so we can't get this yet. Actually, all of your equipments are also golems, but that doesn't actually count, so... Because they're already equipments. Um, but that's good to know. So stay here, take on Create Contraption on this side. Next up is Expedition to Atlantis. Whenever a hero card is discarded, add a token to this card. At the end of your turn, each player will discard up to two cards. When there are six tokens on this card, flip this card to give us Atlantean Conduit. At the end of your turn, you may draw a card and use a power. That would be really nice to have in Tempest. Uh, we can destroy this ongoing with my revealed inequities because I am... Oh no, I'm equal. It's not above. I'm not... Oh no, sorry. This always destroys the ongoing. But if I'm above my maximum, I deal damage. But I'm not above my maximum. So I can do this. Success. And we don't need to do this, so I won't stay where you are. So this is the first time you're dealt damage and the first time you're dealt damage. Yes. So we'll take this one. Next on the, next on the docket is the Red Menace. The first time this card is dealt damage each turn, it deals the source of that damage three fire damage. At the end of your turn, this card deals each non-villain target one fire damage. When this card will be destroyed, flip it instead to get the Everyman. The first time this card is dealt damage each turn, you may draw a card. At the end of your turn, this card may deal one target X melee damage, where X equals the number of cards in your hand. So, very hot, very damagey, but also very fulfilling on the other side as well. And right now, we have objectives everywhere except on Fnatic. So, if you were able to one-shot 
Nixius, that would give us an objective everywhere, for instance, if we take on Red Menace. So that might be what we want to do. So, the order does not matter here because we do not have Gene Bound Shackles in play. But this will clear the board. So we already hit Nixius, so we could go ahead and hit him again. He'll be at 19. Which isn't quite enough for final for Wrath of Retribution to do enough, but maybe Fanatic can take more damage for that to happen. Each player may discard up to two cards. We don't have to do that, do that especially if we're trying to kill Nixius for the objective flip, so we won't do it. Mysterious Ceremonies is here. Zhulong is here. Right of the true form. Master of the Temple is destroyed. Mysterious Ceremonies is destroyed. We have two cards in the trash on that side. Or in that battle zone, rather. We have a Smoldering Crystal. Uh, a target may take three damage. That what? That's Fanatic because she needs to take damage. Thank you. Damage. Damage. So Fnatic is definitely pretty good right now. Omni Unity not as good. Too long plays mysterious ceremonies. Temporal fractures. The target with lowest HP deals each non-villain target other than itself 200 damage. Then if any hero cards were dealt damage this way. Well, these are not character cards. So another pretty useless card. Although it did add a devastation token or it moved it moved a countdown, that's what it did. So it's actually a really bad card, actually. I take that back. I take everything back. I regret everything. We're doing pretty well on this side, but we're not dealing with the Blavion at all. We're kind of ignoring the whole like thing here. And I think this is a pretty bad situation, is it not? Actually no. If we can get this flipped, this can also go off on the same turn. The problem is, well, there are not enough environment cards in the trash, but that can change. Um, like, for instance, this will automatically just make for three environment cards in the trash by itself. So maybe we need to now focus on getting four hero targets in the other battle zone. That said, I do want to flip all the objectives. So kill Nexius and then move things to the other battle zone, I guess. Hopefully whoever moves can survive. Because we'd like Tempest to stay here because AoE. But yeah, you stay here, you take. And then we get all of these objectives. Meanwhile, we also have War Torn Landscape, which will also play environment cards. Fun. Let's start every turn here. Target regains one HP. Um, Tempest. I'm gonna leave Fnatic low. Um, it's not really nice for her to be low, but it's okay if she like dies. <laughs> it's okay if she like dies. Um. I don't think Divine Sacrifice is going to help us here. We still don't have multiple targets. And I don't really foresee Final Dive doing much after this turn. So let's wail on Nixius. We get all these objectives. Red Met, or sorry, Everyman, T-Rex Bot, Chekhov's Hairdryer, and Atlantean Conduit. Yeah. Now, destroying a Scion will replace on the first phase, so the replacement Scion is Aeon Master. Yikes. But, 
Tempest could easily just kill all the AM men that AM Master plays, so we're fine here. Gain HP, draw a card. Draw a card. Progeny is about to flip. I'm gonna hit Aeon Master instead, as I don't want Progeny to flip with a stupid high number of tokens. So now we need to consider heroes to move the battle zone 2. We'd have T-Rex Bot, which is 9 damage. Uh, what does True Form do again? Deals second highest HP damage. Whenever a target is destroyed by damage, dealt by this card, play the top card of the environment deck. So. Um. Yeah, we're definitely not going to get that. Like, this is a reward you can't actually get on your own turn anyway. So. Unless. I mean, the one way you could do it is kill. Um. Kill whatchamacallit. The one we just killed. Whose name I have already forgotten. Uh, he's gone forever, never to be seen again. Nixius. I couldn't. I, I don't know why I couldn't remember his name. You could kill Nixius on your own turn, and that's the only way you can get Cold War on your own turn. Um. I guess like if we could take out True Form, there would be less going on. This only damages villains. This will kill True Form. And I may use a power, so I will damage Oblivion! Nemesis damage! Yes! But he's immune to damage. All according to plan. Alright, there are now three cards in the environment trash. There are also three more environment cards for fun. Whenever a non-character card villain target is destroyed, put it under this card. Always scary. So. Luminary and T-Rex bot, those are two targets. We need another one. This is end of turn one and one. So yeah, we want Lantern Jack to move. Her Hermetic? 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 I never remember how you're supposed to be pronounced. At the end of your turn, this card deals each hero target one irreducible infernal damage. Any hero character card dealt damage this way deals itself one psychic damage. When this card to be destroyed, flip it instead to get the Bloodstone. At the end of your turn, discard a card. When your hero will be incapacitated, restore them to their max HP instead, then destroy this card. When this card is destroyed, each hero target regains 6 HP. Even if they are at or above their maximum. I, no, just kidding. Um... It's irreducible, which is unfortunate, but I do like it, right? So I'll take. Hermetic. So hermetic, like hermet. Someone once, I think someone said it's like, imagine saying medic, like hermetic. My medic, his medic, hermetic. Hermetic. Hermet. Hermetic. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um... At the end of the day, how much does pronunciation actually matter? There are people out there that still insist that the Final Fantasy X protagonist's name is Titus, even though there are official sources that say it's Titus. Different sound from heretic. Her. Hermetic. Sounds like... Meh. Sounds like memetic, but that might not... Memetic? Memetic? Like, memetic. Her hermetic. I don't, okay, whatever. I don't care. I'm past it. We're past it. <laughs> if you would like to file a complaint, please email trash at gmail.com. And then submit your email to the recycle bin. <laughs> uh, we have Chekhov's hairdryer. That's damage. So this... When this card is destroyed, first deals each non-environment target one toxic damage. We're gonna have to tank that, I guess. We could do a lot of damage on her on uh, this guy.
do you want to kind of be careful? I am currently equal, so my damage is increased by one. When I hit myself, it lowers it. So I could do two to all right now, but then, like, if I kill this apprentice poisoner, it hits me, and then I'm back low. I mean, Cursor still helps out a bit, though, right? First time I'm dealt damage, I gain an HP and increase the next damage dealt by one. I like that. I like that. Let's take that. Although, it'd be bad if this if this incorporates this guy's damage. <laughs> I'm going to go to great lengths to not say the name. I'll definitely hit the guy. Um, unfortunately, I can't actually because cursors. Oh no! I, no! Oh no! Okay, no, no, no! I got this. I got this. Also, T-Rex bot is helping. Um, and Cursor helps because there's a plus one on that. So so this guy is actually not doing damage. That's good. We use up the minus four on Cursor. Hitting Lantern Jack gains an HP, but increases it by two because I was less. That's, ooh, ooh. Ooh. I was lower than max, so I got an increase. Nice. Uh, then... This guy is hit, then T-Rex bot. T-Rex bot hits this guy, kills this apprentice poisoner. This apprentice poisoner hits this guy, and yay, we got it. And then the rest of this is inconsequential. And I think the other apprentice also dies. All that just so that we take out this guy. I have to discard a card. Do I need two of these? I'm gonna say no. It is, it's not limited, but you don't need to use that power twice. But I mean, like if the first one is destroyed, you know, it'd be nice to have the second one. All right, so we have two targets there, two targets here. So we have four targets, theoretically enough for one and one to work. Assuming that no one dies, but no one should die because it's just Oblivion's turn. What's the worst that could happen? He deals damage? It's a villain card, Michael. What's the most damage it could do? One? You've never played Sentinels of the Multiverse, have you? <laughs> you wonder if anyone ever took out Oblivion in phase one after all these years. Uh, uh, John did a cheated setup to make it happen. <laughs> Alright, so we leave Tempest here to do AoE. Uh, take this objective, because why not? And then damage. Yeah, destroying Oblivion in phase one doesn't actually do anything because he just destroys an environment. It's so, like, it's such a tease. That doesn't count, Dolphin. We all know it. Yeah, let's see. So when the countdown re token reaches zero or if Oblivion will be destroyed, then, yeah, it's literally the same as if the countdown reaches zero. Like, it would kind of be nice if there was a benefit but, I mean, I get it. I, I mean, all right, so Aeon Warrior came out. This is an annoying one. I guess Mahiro Legato could take him out. We have two powers. Why did I discard the other Grievous Hail Star when I have two powers? <laughs> Because I didn't know I was going to get two powers, that's why. I could just kill it with this, I guess. 
So I'm not using Cleansing Downpour, so I'm going to do Genebound Shackles. And Genebound Shackles deals extra damage to the target that's highest. Yes, that exists for people who do the friendly fire loop and don't listen to the new rulings. Tis foolish. Jack handle friendly fire. Uh, which one do I hate more? Oh, wait, I think I was gonna use my, wait. Oh, I get, oh, right, no, this, okay, 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 no, we're fine. Um, I'm gonna hit you just to try to keep highest semi-same. I get an extra power so I can hit Neon Warrior. And... Neon Legato increases that. Fnatic can definitely take it. Tempest could. Who are you going after? You're gonna flip and then you're going to hit the lowest. Lowest is Fnatic. Second highest is Tempest. Highest is Mejor Legato. Yeah, Master just plays a card. So I think you can take the damage. Double friendly fire plus oh yeah on that guy on setback and extreme prime warden fanatics base power against oblivion. We have no incapacitated cards to return. This is end of turn, so we could do a play or draw three. We also have Master of the Temple, which is going to put true form in play, which is annoying because we need to make sure things don't frickin' die. Um, so, like... I discarded the one that would have done AoE healing, but an extra hit point on, set on Fnatic is fine by me. Is there AoE healing here? Why are you so self HP focused? Also, this is the wrong battle zone. What am I looking at? Oh no, I lost my mint. I'm looking at the wrong battle zone. Uh. Actually, it's not even fanatic in that battle zone. What am I talking about? It's you. Okay, no. Yeah, I was, I was, I was, I thought it was fanatic in Lantern Jack because I'm dumb. Okay. So it's Luminary in Lantern Jack. Can Luminary do something to heal his own devices or not devices like things? No, right? You're you're very device focused. I could just play a target. And then you have it. Yeah, I'll play a target. Put repair nanites out. I am discarding cards because I'm doing the wrong thing. I lost my mint again. Alright, bye Lucky. Reform is back. Oh no. Oh no. Well, so much for that plan. All right, so plan B, uh, Scion phase two, or uh, Scion to battle zone two, move Oblivion to battle zone two, which has zero environment cards in the trash. Okay, that also sucks. Yikers. Well, so much for that. Uh, Cursor's already gone off? No, that's not the same battle zone as Cursor. Okay, oh. environment breaking all my setup Ow. 
It was this mysterious ceremony that did it, didn't it? I guess not, because... It does reshuffle the environment deck. Magmarian Throng giving us a Stone Shaper. Okay, there, now we have three cards in the environment trash. Okay. So we do have two of these. So you have to watch out as this... Magmarian with the highest HP will deal each target one fire damage and destroy one, equi one equipment cards twice. But... We also have, like, Flash Flood, so it's okay. Uh, select a, a discard of Magma Crystal, select a target, reduce damage dealt to selected targets by one. And... Oh. Was it this one? No. It was this one. This was the one that was counting discarded cards. We already got it, so it doesn't matter. Uh, and this is Gosson too. Yep. Also, do we have Magma Crystals first off? Like, yeah, we have Smoldering Crystal. We have Equipments. Is there any merit in putting a minus one somewhere? Uh, probably not, because if we do want to obtain the, she the, the thing, we want no minus ones. All right, skip. Move Oblivion to this battle zone. Move Oblivion to this battle zone. Yes! Maybe it's not a good thing, though. <laughs> Maybe not. Fnatic might not survive, and then we won't have four targets. But we tried. Yep, Fnatic's gone. But Faultless is here. All right, I hit random. We got Dark Watch Expatriate. Dark Watch Expatriate, who has three rewards on the Unity, meager winnings, and every man. We also have this coming up, which needs two heroes in order to obtain, which gives the Apex of Humanity, which is pretty good. So... Alright, so Oblivion is here, so this is gonna go off. Because we have three cards, yeah. Four hero targets have to take damage, which is currently three. Unless he moves battle zones. It's actually possible for him to move battle zones. He could do the one that says move to the thing with most hero targets, and then he deals stupid damage. Actually, that kills... You wonder how the math shakes out with shooting a gun versus Omni Unity making it an ammo do lightning plinks. True. Because these are equipments. Sorry. Where's ammo? This, these are equipments. They will be mechanical golems. All right, so what are the ways for him to move battle zones? He could move heroes dealt damage this way to the other battle zone. If no heroes are moved, move him instead. Which, if he incaps, that doesn't move, right? So that's a possibility. There are three of those. Um, this destroys the non-villain target with the lowest, which is Tempest, but isn't destroyed, so he would move.
This one moves him, but then will kill the things we want to take damage, so it's not good. So there are like five outs. Three disrupt, three disrupt space times, two hair to nothingnesses. Both of these will incap Tempest. But I think either way we want. Oh. I mean, moving Expatriate saves her from damage on this battle zone. But if Tempest gets incapped by something else. An expatriate is not here. Then we get four devastation tokens from this. So I guess she has to stay here. Lantern Jack will survive even the the one that was bad. This deals six and six, but Cursor reduces the first hit by four, so that's okay. So it's two and six to Lantern Jack, and then he'll survive. Yeah. But the one that was really bad was what, Tier 3 Reality, which will kill Tempest and leaves Oblivion in this battle. But he moves to the one with the most hero targets, which will be a battle zone. Oh no, sorry, no, it's the one where he damages everyone, which is this one. Sorry. If he does this one, this kills Tempest, but he stays in the same battle zone. But if I don't... Oh, but if I leave an Expatriate here and he plays this, then Expatriate moves and then he doesn't move. Which is actually slightly more likely. There's three copies of this, but two copies of this. So Expatriate moves then. Okay. Objective flips. We get the bad one. Lantern Jack can survive, but we will not have four hero targets to take the damage. Because Luminary dies, these die, this is tied to Lantern Jack. Oh, but it's going to die anyway, yeah, so that's unfortunate. me set back how lucky and I think we leave set back here because we can claim this on expatriate is there reasons to take these first I don't know. I don't really like regaining rewards as your tempo really slows down. Unless they're really good rewards. Which, these are okay when they're in play, but I feel like they're really slow to waste the turn on. Like, this deals two damage if I waste a turn on it. This deals four damage. Or five damage, I guess. Enough set. So... Focusing my efforts instead on getting the infusion of power feels better. There's no reason to leave heroes in battle zone one. Moving everyone to battle zone two is better, I think, because we will not get the effects of the environment destruction. There's no science in battle zone one anyway, so we don't lose devastation tokens in doing so. I guess like we'll gain four devastation tokens here as well as here, but I mean we. We don't have anyone that can survive the environment destruction anyway. So we just have to deal with that and then the devastation tokens, which is gruesome. But we could focus on Faultless. We're still on the side where he'll replace a Scion, but 
I don't think we're dealing 39 damage this round anyway, but getting him down gives us another hero, which is really good. But in any case, we want to leave everyone in Battle Zone 1 to start with because we want two heroes in the Battle Zone, which we can achieve if we only have everyone in Battle Zone 1. So do this. Take the objective. Next up is Oblivion Shard on setback with T-Rex Spot. Things are looking up. Uh, we definitely need to get rid of these fiery crystallizations or the stone shaper or Megmarian Throng and stone shaper. We have Flash Flood to do that at least. Tempest is probably going to die, which is unfortunate. Um, your base power just increases your damage. So you also are kind of wasting a turn anyway because you don't have any gotten. I guess you could do this and maybe get lucky. Maybe I do that and maybe get lucky. I got the shotgun. I got lucky. I'm going to focus down Faultless as I don't want to hit Progeny. I guess he's flipped, but he also has minus four, so it doesn't do anything. Yeah, I'm just going to hit Prog... I'm just, I'm just going to hit Faultless. And Tempest is probably dying, but he also has a plus one, so this is... Oh, it's, after, it's actually a death sentence. Okay. All right. Apex of Humanity is here. So now you go to Battle Zone 2, you take the shard, and then you have it. Oh, and the Mecha Knight here as well. You get both of those on setback. As long as you don't take any rewards or objectives or anything. It feels awkward. We could, we could definitely get... If we want, we can get the Mecha Knight on Lantern Jack. Because we will have four hero targets in one battle zone, which is the requirement here. And then later, we could try to trade this over to Lantern Jack. Or we leave this on setback and he just takes it. I mean, we don't have to do the wombo combo, right? We don't have to. Well, in case, things are looking up. So I'm going to look up. This is the best way to add tokens. Do I need to do extra damage to kill Locust or Warrior? Because you only have five damage. Oh, you have an extra power and you have your legato, so I just I don't care. Okay. Also, we have Lantern Jack, who might do something. Oh, he has Chekhov's hair dryer. But he's going to use it on something else. All right. Enraged Terror Bird is here. Can we? Ooh, can we get this? Uh, that would be a way of saving Tempest. Actually, Bloodstone, no. Bloodstone saves Lantern Jack. Wait, could I have used the Bloodstone to save and gotten the shield out past round? Oh, well. Let's make damage dealt by heroes. Oh, but you only have one power. Irreducible damage will be really good for getting through Progeny's defenses. But this also gets rid of... This gets through Progeny's defenses and deals a lot of damage. But, like, this is worth 5 damage to Progeny immediately. And it also piles up on Faultless as he can't reduce damage anymore. Hmm... I mean, surely irreducible damage is better, as that allows us to hit progeny better, right? Surely.
Reduce damage dealt by non-hero targets by 10? What? Oh my god. What a way to say non-irreducible damage is not dealt. Uh, already in play. All right, I'll discard that one. We have to discard each of these cards. Okay, Mecha Knight is here. Stay. You're not going to swap the true hero because we're using it. We're not trading it because we're using it. Is this a shuffle? Is there a reward that we want instead? Citizen Storm. <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad one. Uh, sorry, Enraged Terrorbird, not Citizen Storm. Citizen Storm is a bad one. Enraged Terrorbird's not a bad one. Orchestrate the Void would be really nice. I don't know how effective we are with this team to get it. Great Fortune is always really good. Let's do a shuffle for fun. We got Great Fortune. Fantastic. Also, I forgot that with Gene Bound Shackles, it's actually even more damage. But he only reduces it by four, so we're actually dealing eight more damage. As Dreamus Hailstorm was gonna deal five. So five minus four is one. However, on the other side, him not taking damage makes him the highest, which means Aeon Master doesn't take more damage, so it actually is slightly better. Okay. I think it, I think I'm happy with that decision then. These are no longer magma crystals. Wait. Yeah, no, okay, yeah. We got rid of the things I was going to destroy our stuff. Okay. And then again, order here. So then we kill these guys. And then each of us take the damage. Alright, Brother Sacrifice here to save Tempest and keep his setup alive. Another assassin put into play. Hits Oblivion. A Princess Poisoner put into play. Mysterious Simonis dies. Princess Poisoner hits Oblivion. You know, standard things. Crystalloid Behemoth, which would have killed Tempest, but will instead keep him alive and also make the rest of us immune to damage. I like that. So prevent the damage. So we're definitely getting eight devastation tokens on Oblivion's turn, by the way, but keeping our setup alive is really valuable. That Aeon Locust, on the other hand, is not super valuable. <laughs> As you're gonna play an Aeon Man. And maybe get destroyed by Oblivion if he changes battle zones. I'm 
All right, what's happening here? No damage is dealt here because we're immune. No damage is dealt because we're immune, but also Oblivion didn't move, so his environment destruction is wasted. Aeon Locust plays Aeon Locust. Or sorry, no, Aeon Master played Aeon Locust. Aeon Locust plays Aeon Locust. Aeon Locust heals Aeon Locust. Aeon Locust heals Aeon Locust. Okay. So don't change battle zones, Oblivion, please. Oh, we. Ooh. Right, with the countdown, we actually select the environment. Right. I mean, it's really unfortunate that we have three Aeon Locuses here, as we could deal a bunch of damage to these. And in fact, destroying Faultless could be pretty valuable. That turns you into a hero? Of course, the downside is he's going to play three cards. Oh, but wait, Brother Sacrifice, it's not in play. <laughs> Hero targets are immune to damage. Okay, so Destroyed Faultless can't be touched by Oblivion. But we would still be getting three card plays. Unless the first card play says move Oblivion to the other battle zone. And I was thinking maybe getting a flipped Faultless who takes the damage from the shield would be nice, but he's a hero target and would not take damage. So we're definitely getting eight Devastation tokens anyway. Destroying the Scions won't actually do that much. And we can still whittle them down with Tempest on the next round anyway. So yeah, I guess he stays where he is, as unfortunate as it is. But it's safer for us. So his card did nothing. He kills Anthral, which does nothing. Adds four tokens. Brings out Boar. Oh boy. And then Disintegrating Bastion, which will then add four Devastation tokens as well. So we might need to move Setback to Battle Zone 2 or 1 or whatever. There's going to be an Environment Destruction, but he can survive it. He just has to survive Boar. Take some hit points off that. But putting out a target for Oblivion to hit with either his shield or his innate will stop eight devastation tokens. So I guess we have to do that. He's not super well set up, but there is a shattering blow there, which is kind of unfortunate. But you stay here. And I definitely want this over my rewards. So I'm going to take it. I have a shotgun, so I have a power. This crystalloid behemoth is going to do four damage again, but we have five damage coming from Tempest. I don't really think I need to get rid of Magmarian Throng. I don't have a use for unload. So I guess I play here trigger reflex. So I do have a plus one, so it's pretty good. And keep focusing on faultless. Yeah. 
Whenever a hero uses a power, deal damage, but you're not going to take damage. Select a card in my hand, reveal the top card of my deck. If they share a keyword, put them both into play, or rather play both. We have equipment, ammo, equipment, limited gun, and one shot. Limited hits ongoing limited, but... I mean, it doesn't matter if it can't be played. So I guess equipment limited gun is better than equipment ammo, as that hits all the same things, but also hits speed loading. And one shot seems bad, because we have two, five, eight, ten, eleven one shots. Which means that we have 21 not one shots, which means all the equipments and ongoings. All right, so I select the submachine gun and we get a one shot. Womp womp. Sacrifice setback. You don't want to lose the shattering blow. If I swap, it's going to put it on the bottom and I could reshuffle for it. But we could instead use our actions to gain objectives. What's my in caps? Draw, play, regain a hit point. You only have two hit points to regain. I'm thinking of just doing Uncharmed Life. Although killing Aeon Warrior would stop that damage, which is two and two. So if I were to use my action to play cash out, I could regain two hit points at the cost of three cards, which is my entire hand, actually. Well, no, I, I draw cards based on tokens removed, so it's fine. There's no point to shuffling or swapping, and this is T-Rex bot who won't survive the environment destruction, so let's use the ink hab. I could just regain one hit point, which is half as good as two, but I mean, if I lose by one hit point, that's the hit point that mattered. Let's play that, but then look up to get rid of Aeon Warrior. Oh, Silver Lining, that would have been nice to have. Stay here. Take the objective and now try to do things that involve actions. We could reduce damage to non hero targets by 10, but if Oblivion moves the battle zone 2, that actually still sucks. We don't actually want this while we're in phase 2. I could do this one because I'm not... Oh, damage is no longer irreducible, though. My difference is eight. This HP recovery happens at the start of the villain turn. So those Aeon Locusts need a little bit of love. Um, we have like Chained Lightning, but I want to play probably Otherworldly Resilience to try to keep Tempest alive. Although the Cleansing Downpour would be a little bit better. <laughs> Maybe that's better. Oh god. Can we keep Tempest alive? You're dealing three damage to Tempest. That's not good. But you're going to bring in two if we kill Fallas. I guess we could just play this one to be safe. Okay. 
Okay. Lantern Jack needs another power. Or, yeah, he needs to be able to use another power. That's what I mean. He has powers, he just can't use them. Okay, stay here. Citizen Storm is here. He's going to destroy a hero ongoing card. We do have some we could destroy, I guess. Just take it to get it out of the deck. Hit it as well, because why not? And then we are no longer immune to damage. We still have damage irreducibility on our side. Here, trigger reflexes is also helping with the and master plays. this out and then you have it Working on Faultless. Regain those hit points. Citizen so Storm destroys something. I don't think we need revealed inequities anymore. All right. Horrid Skunky. Adding a token to Bore the Unstable. Not a good start. Scion damaging Bore. Also not good. Or sorry, Bore damaging setback. That's the word. Setback discards a card. I think setback's not going to survive Oblivion. No, he'll take 20. Maybe he takes the four, but then he won't take the one and one here. So we're going to get four devastation tokens there. Even if we move... Well, he might move. But if he moves, then we don't get the four here. I don't really know why I'm paying them. They're friendly. It's fine, though. Nothing... Oh no, this is self damage, so it does go through. Yikes. Don't kill yourself. No damage will be dealt. Nothing bad here just yet. All right, Oblivion. We're kind of going through these environments too fast, actually. And he is moving to the wrong battle zone. 
Actually, I think we will take this damage. So we're not getting four here, but I think setback's gone. Or sorry, Tempest is gone. Despite my efforts to keep him alive. Pretty ineffectual tier three reality, huh? I'm gonna hold tap for this. But this is killing Tempest. Bad day. Can I get this first? No. Ugh. That's really unfortunate. I guess there's a. Oh, there's not even a play here. Wow. All right. I don't think order matters. Does order matter? Wait, hold on. Well, does it, I can't actually go back. Um, okay, now I can go back. Did it matter because Tempest had another target? Yeah, if I hit me, because I need four hero targets to take damage. Can we do that? Well, this is too swarmy. Hello, Kokiomat. So me her legato first, and then we take four, or four targets to take the damage. Yeah. No. Why did that not go up? At least four hero targets take damage. So one. Two. Three. Four. doesn't show the count, but that was four. Starlight? Stay where we are for now. Yeah, it's still in play. Seems like a bug. I don't know. Did it also add devastation tokens? 
Wait. No. Okay. It did not because you were at eight. Took twelve. So it definitely recognizes that some hero target took damage, but it's not counting the four. Oh, and I don't want to cheat this. Wait. I, I said Starlight, but it's not Starlight. <laughs> Who was the hero that came up? I don't want to like hit random and change it. Uh... Oh, Star Knight. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I had the right rhyme, but not the right word. All right. Well, we lost Tempest, which means we lost a lot of our damage, which is really unfortunate. I don't know how to make up for that yet. We still have minus 10 damage to this crystal behemoth's not doing anything just yet. But we could use RPG launcher just to take it out or something. We are losing another environment right now though. But if I can kill enough scions, then we won't. But Boar will add one if we don't leave a hero over there. So, like, kind of sucks. And we are down to the wire here. I mean, you have to stay in the same battle zone as Oblivion because of all the core shit that's happening. This doesn't feel like we're going to make it. I'll be honest. I'm going to keep Expatriate here. It seems risky, but... need help. Oh, we have this still. Just gonna regain something. I'll take Omni Unity. I don't know that I'm gonna play it just yet. I'm debating RPG Launcher just to get rid of that behemoth. Because this minus 10 expires here. So we can kill Faultless. While our damage is still irreducible, we'll hit Progeny. But this kills Fallis. I select Magma Crystal! Two hollow points. While well, the second one fizzles. But now we have Lucky Break. So everyone can play equipment ammos. But you have no equipment. You, you have an equipment. Okay, so you get a damage increase, which is good. And you have none. So we get something from there. And then this one fizzles. So it wasn't the greatest lucky break, but we got lucky break. So things are looking up. We might need to consider getting Shattering Blow before we lose lose it, but we also don't have a means of like 
I'm keeping it. We can actually, no, we can actually do 12 damage to Bloody on this turn. That's right. Okay, so let's do that. Because we get 3 damage here and 9 damage off T-Rex spot. So we can at least get Shattering Blow, which might be our reprieve. Then someone needs to go to Battle Zone 1. Probably Lantern Jack. Although Orchestrate the Voyage is sad. Uh, let's not shuffle. I don't know. I don't know. Um, killing boar deals damage back, but it does stop the scion phase from happening. If we could one-shot him, it stops him from getting a token, which would stop him from dealing more damage. So I'm gonna just one-shot him. Like, literally one-shot him. It does also give us the devastation token back, so maybe this is good. That's uh, helpful right now. We have nothing to hit, so I will regain the hit points. Discard the card that's already in play and is limited. Okay. So we might not get the environment destruction, and we'll have 11 de devastation tokens. On the other hand, setback's probably going to die. Is there any merit to regaining a reward here? Ihor Legato is automatic damage and a passive damage increase. This gives you a power which won't be immediately helpful. Is there any reason to use these cards this turn? Your base power plays a card. Though these plays don't really do anything. Unless I want to destroy this equipment card. Which is getting a plus one to Star Knight, but also provides a discard, a draw, and a play when this is destroyed. And I'm just gonna regain Mihor Legato for automatic damage. And then I'll play that one. Search your thing for Sword of the Star Knight. Yay. Are we going to be able to kill Oblivion in time? I don't know. But every damage counts. Increase all damage dealt by one. Yay! More Megmarians! This Patriot does have a Magma Crystal. Draw three there. Deal one target three three. Whenever a target we dealt damage, redirect to this card, or well, discard a magma crystal to do that. Any player that those may use a power, which would be like seven damage. Let's see, what was the setback? Is there a way that we can get set back to play Silver Lining? Um, 
Probably not, because this happens after the damage happens. So, draw three, deal damage. This, I guess this could save setback. And then we could do a top card play to maybe get silver lining, but there's also more cards that deal setback damage, which is dangerous. I guess he rains two off of this. So let's keep the damage redirection as an option. Uh-oh, and Master flipped. Uh-oh, uh-oh, that might be bad. Flipped and Master is the worst, because Oblivion destroys an Aeon Man, such as Aeon Locus. Which means we're going to deal damage. Which is unfortunate. Can't save setback anymore. But we also don't have a flip day on Master because I screwed up. Destroy and my cards. And move each AM man to the other battle zone. That's mm, probably not good because he's going to play a card. Let's get rid of the one that deals damage and the one that draws, because powers and redirection is probably more strong. Another Aeon Locus. Ugh. All right, we need to destroy it. a plus oh but we have a plus one here okay so we can use this which will also just give a discard a draw and a play discard draw and we can get sort of the star knight into play again <laughs> It left, and now it is back. No, it cannot, because it's in the act of getting destroyed. Man! Sentinel's rules are the worst! So, Sword of the Star Knight is in the act of getting destroyed, so I cannot put it into play. Unpacked. So. I'm just gonna play this because I don't know. We're killing Ann Locus already. We have a minus one. This will play a card which will go off, so I don't wanna hit that. But I don't know why I played this, but I felt like it. And that's what matters. It, it dealt two damage. It's fine. Put a Sword of the Star Knight on the bottom so I can get another one back later. And one of these. Deal the damage. I was in such a rush to get rid of Aeon Locus, but he's not going to do anything other than play an Aeon Man, I guess. Let's... Regain hit points in the off chance you can survive. Give the card draw to Expatriate, your girlfriend. Expatriate uses the shotgun. Just keep weighing down on Progeny. All right. Damage. And 
setback is dead, right? Oh, you know. Also, you're killing Ann Locuses in the other battle zone as well, which is even worse. Uh, well... I don't know what order of operations makes sense here. Let's hit all the targets before we hit Aeon Locust, because this is hitting everyone anyway, no matter where you move. So just like, do this part. Oh, actually, ooh. that does kill the Aeon Locust in this battle zone, but you're, yeah, is there's no Aeon Locust in this battle zone, never mind. There is merit to hitting you. I don't know. Oh, but this. Okay, no, there is. Okay, this kills this Aeon Warrior. Before Oblivion destroys it. Okay, cool. Also, hits Aeon Master. So maybe I should have. Oh, we already hit Aeon Master, right? Okay, okay, we're fine. We're fine. This is why you never hit choose for me in oblivion mode. I don't know what last minute reprieve setback could have though, but we'll try. And Locus deals damage, moves heroes. It's actually really unfortunate because now you're moving to the wrong battle zone, but you're no longer hit by Aeon Warrior. Or no, you will be hit by Aeon Warrior because this is the other battle zone. No, that's battle zone one. Oh, okay, no, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, and then setback dies. Kill the environment cards. Yeah, and then four devastation tokens because we never got rid of disintegrating bastion. The worst. But we got a new scion out, I guess, who hits oblivion, so yay, yes. And then that, oh my god. This shield in stage two is so bad. We're blowing up an environment and no one can survive it, but also you're gonna add eight devastation tokens and we lose the game, and also we have like no damage. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Star Knight could maybe survive, but I doubt doubt it. I doubt it. Follows is still alive. Everyone can play an equipment limited gun. Cosmic could stay alive. No, I put him here to regain the Oblivion shard and find a way to use it. Looks like animation might not be a correct one. <laughs> He's gonna regain the hit points, it's fine. It's fine. Get rid of you. Oh, 
Oh, you played an and locust, did you? Damage Oblivion! And do not play Ignite the Blade. Oblivion to the other battle song. Yeah, they're just Oblivion things. Just Oblivion things. A hero may choose to be dealt three damage to get this to their hand. No thanks. Damage. Aha! That's why I played unflagging animation. That Oblivion chart doesn't get destroyed. Ha ha! Plot twist. have to take out Ann Master, actually. A blue van will do it for me. I get to use a power. Oh, I guess damage is being dealt. I guess. Maybe that's the reason to take out Aeon Master so that that damage doesn't happen. Oh, well. Gain 17 devastation tokens again. Yay. Okay. 
We now have this guy. Frail creatures, so they block less. Wait, this isn't Slay the Spire. Okay, can we use this to deal millions of damage? No. <laughs> Maybe T-Rex bot does it? You think T-Rex bot can deal millions of damage with the Oblivion Charge? You're the only one in this battle zone, so this is a good time for a lucky break. Shuffle up to two cards from your hand, face up into your deck, sure. I have no momentums. I have no momentums. TRX bot will save the day. Oh, you're not even in the right battle zone. My bad. Let's fix that. We are here. We are almost halfway through his HP. Looking good. Things are looking good. Get the blurred. Not ignite the blade. This card is destroyed, drop to three cards, discard to five cards, draw X cards, or X is the number of cards, discard this one. Okay. Put the blade back in the deck. Do whatever. Yes. I revealed three, so Void Soul flips. Best Scion ever.
Velociraptor pack. Nibbles on Empyrean. Empyrean nibbles on Velociraptor pack and himself. Enclave brings out an extra play. Slamara. Damage. Scion. No momentums. I was supposed to, I played that I was supposed to play that with him. Whatever. It doesn't freaking matter. Wait, it might matter. Oh my god. No, it's no, we lost. We lost. Destroy Hero ongoing card. Need to deal damage to Oblivion on the turn where we can't deal damage to Oblivion. Also, this damage set. Oh, good, Oblivion chart. Nice. I mean, I should have just hit Captain Cosmic first to not kill him, but you know. Let's just, uh. Let's just end this match because it was losing anyway. Just get over it. Let's, let's just look so past it. Move on. I thought I was doing well, but I think I was focusing too much on objectives. I think the fact that we had too many devastation tokens going into phase two with disintegrating Bastion into play just meant we were always going to lose. We really needed to get rid of disintegrating Bastion as fast as we could, and we didn't. Disintegrating Bastion does not combo well with phase two because that's eight devastation tokens per round whenever you have no heroes in the battle zone with Oblivion, which happens when you move all the heroes out because he's blowing up an environment and then he'll blow up another environment and add eight more devastation tokens, which means he'll blow up another environment. So we just had that dumb loop. So, um, granted, we didn't really get through phase one that well, probably because I was focusing too much on objectives. I mean, I did focus on killing um Nixius on the flip side to get four objective flips but I probably should have focused on getting rid of the environment I don't think we had good environment control that said but we did have like destroy two environment cards on Tempest so I could have flipped the card earlier and then gotten the shield flip earlier maybe or the shield removal earlier but we can just say I'm rusty we can say that I haven't really done sentinels in a, in a long time so we could just blame it on rust Oh, well, a lot of these shields kind of suck anyway, let's be honest. But it is what it is, and the definitive edition is out, and it's improving everything about the game, allegedly, even though I haven't played it yet, but everyone says that it's better to play, and everyone wants it to be implemented. But it is on the agenda for 2024 for Handelabra, so we'll see when that comes out. I'm sure it's in development right now. Uh, you can always trust on Handelabra to release quality content. Remember, they are a small team, so they don't get quality content out fast, but it is quality. But that is it for Dolphin's Dive this week. Unfortunate that we started with a loss, but I mean, I kind of brought it upon myself, didn't I? Um, seems like the only other stream we have now is Handle Labor Live, um, which is Tuesday at 7 p.m. And Dolphin's Dive, which preliminarily should be Wednesday next week. 
as I said, every week I will decide when the stream will be based on my work schedule. And I think next week we'll just stick with Wednesday night. So next Wednesday, the 10th at, let's say, 7 p.m., uh, you can see the next Dolphins dive. Um, yeah. Be sure to check out Handle Lava Products, Sentinels the Multiverse, Sentinels of Earth Prime, Bottom of the Ninth, One Deck Dungeon, One Deck Galaxy, Aeon's End, and Spirit Island, all available on Steam, iOS, and Android devices. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good night.